Hey y'all, Oren Whiting with Whiting Fitness here. Hey, uh, just wanted to go over some stuff I was thinking about tonight, um, working on some of my master's homework and um, get you off and thinking about kind of sources that are out there. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet. There's a lot of, you know, just random blog articles, opinions on Instagram. Um, so we really have to learn how to filter our sources, right? Um, and, and we always, us in kind of the science community, will push people towards peer-reviewed literature all the time, right? Um, and I say this kind of hesitantly because it's often been kind of like an argument used by maybe people that are like anti-vaccine or something like that, that peer-reviewed articles aren't perfect and that's true but you know they are also a lot better sources for information than you know some mommy blog out there on, on the internet as well so i say this semi-hesitantly but you know there are flaws to peer-reviewed literature and the more of it you read the more kind of almost skeptical you have to be of what you're reading and um, and also just kind of think about how these people are getting their findings, right? So, for example, um, I read an article today, let me just get this pulled up, talking about exercise-induced asthma is kind of the subject I was studying tonight. And there was a study called the hypertrophic effects of inhaled beta-2 agonist with and without concurrent exercise training, um, a randomized controlled trial. So it starts off pretty good. They have about 67 participants that participated in this study. Um, you know, that, that's a decent sample size. So um, you always wanna kind of look at sample size, you know, just a handful of people isn't gonna hold a whole lot of weight, but you know, you start breaking 50, um, 60 participants and it starts holding a little more weight. Um, so that started good, um, but they had a four week intervention of, um, of this study. So they have people taking this um, type of um, drug that is commonly used for asthma, you know, people that are suffering from exercise induced asthma or even just like regular type uh, asthma. So they have them take beta 2 agonists and it's kind of like a rescue inhaler. Um, but what they did is they had, they put these people into three different groups, a basically a controlled group that just did what they've been doing. And then a group that did resistance training, which is weightlifting. And then also a group that did endurance training, right? Some more cardiovascular type training. And what they found was that the group that did resistance training put on lean mass by about one kilogram. Okay, so a couple pounds of lean mass. Um, and, and you know, that's pretty significant in a four week time period. Um, but their conclusion was, um, you know, straight out of their abstract is that daily inhalation of terbutaline in near therapeutic doses induces skeletal muscle, muscle growth. This observation should be a concern for anti-doping authorities. Now, this is the problem I have with that. They only had one group lifting weights, and that was the only group that put on any muscle. Well, I mean, isn't that just a natural assumption that the group that's lifting weights are going to put on some damn muscle? Like, obviously. So here's the problem with this study. They didn't control um, a variable of let's have a group who is taking this beta agonist and lifting and also a group who isn't taking this beta agonist and lifting. You know, that's the thing, that would be an apples to apples comparison. So it doesn't make too much sense that they're gonna compare, uh, you know, an endurance group and a group doing nothing to a group lifting weights. Obviously, that group that's lifting weights is gonna put on some more muscle. So even within the realm of peer reviewed literature, we have to take it with a grain of salt. We have to look at their methods. You have to not be an abstract warrior. You have to delve into the study, you know, see what their methods were and see if it's really holding some weight out there. Okay, so just add that to your filter. Um, create a little hierarchy of how you prioritize what a good source is. Um, take everything with a grain of salt. Have a good one, y'all.